Well, hello there, everybody, and welcome back to the Marley Bird YouTube channel as well as Joanne.com. I'm Marley Bird, and I am thrilled to teach you how to make the Gonna Split Knit Brioche Cowl. This cowl is a fun accessory to knit. It is full of brioche squishy goodness. I absolutely love it. It is made up using two different colors of Yarnspirations Karen Colorama Ogo. We have a multicolor right here and a single one color right here. Do you have to use one color and one multicolor? Absolutely not. You could mix and match anything you want. You could do two multicolors or two single colors. The sky is the limit. One thing to consider as you're choosing your colors is that this cowl is reversible. So you could have the darker color be the more dominant color, or you can have the colors be a little bit more dominant. It's totally up to you. This cowl is made back and forth in rows for eight inches, at which time you join to work in the round and continue on for the rest of the cowl in the round. Now, I know there are those of you out there who are a little bit fearful of brioche stitch, but I am hopeful that I'm able to take away all of your fears today as I break it down for you and help you understand that the brioche stitch is nothing more than a little bit more advanced than a knit one, purl one ribbing. I promise you, you're gonna be able to do this. All right, so here's what I need you to do. Go ahead and grab your yarn, whatever two colors you're going to use, and that free pattern. It's available over at yarnspirations.com. Of course, you know I've put the link right down there in the video description box below, so you don't have to go searching for it. When you have that pattern, join me back here because I have to go over a couple things in the pattern before we can jump into the actual stitches, all right? So let's take a look at the pattern. Let me talk you through a couple things and then we'll jump in to learn how to do the brioche knit, the brioche purl, the slip one yarn over, and then those really fantastic decreases. All right, you can do this, I promise. Let's get our stuff and go. The Gotta Split Knit Brioche Cowl is a fun first brioche project, and you might not believe me, but I promise you it is a great first project. It only uses two ogos, so you will have a color A and a color B. You'll also notice that you're supposed to have a size 9 or a 5.5 millimeter 16 inch circular needle and a 29 inch circular needle or a longer needle, and that's to accommodate all of the stitches we will be using, all right? Uh, we also recommend stitch markers, a yarn needle, and then right down here, there's an option for you to have a larger circular needle to use for your cast on and your bind off to make sure that those are not too snug. You don't need that needle, but if you are somebody who tends to cast on too snug or bind off too snug, it is recommended, all right? Okay, so as you're looking at a brioche pattern, the abbreviations are gonna be very important for you because as you look over here, if this is the first time you've ever done brioche, you are seeing some abbreviations for things that you don't know how to do. But I'm here to tell you, you actually do know how to do these stitches. These two decreases here, they are very easy decreases. You're just gonna decrease two stitches, okay? You're gonna decrease two stitches every time you do one of these decreases. And when we get to that part, you're gonna recognize the decrease that we use and you're gonna be like, oh, this is really cool. So I'm just gonna kind of put a pin in that one, all right? So we're gonna set that one aside and review that one later on. But as you look down here, you have a BRK1. So that's a brioche knit one. Then you have a BR knit two together, that's a brioche knit two together, and you have a BR purl one. If I were to tell you that essentially these are all just a knit one, a knit two together, and a purl one, but you're doing it into a stitch that is considered a partnered pair, would you believe me? Because that's what you're doing. You're doing just a basic knit stitch, a basic purl stitch, a basic knit two together, but the stitch that's on your needle isn't a standalone solitary stitch. It has a partnered yarn over to it. So you will see this stitch on your needle plus your partnered yarn over and you will treat that as if it's one stitch. So it's gonna look like two stitches, but you treat it as one stitch. That's what makes it a brioche knit or a brioche purl or a brioche knit two together. See, you already know how to do these stitches. 
The other thing that you might not fully understand how to do is the slip one yarn over. It seems pretty intuitive, right? You'd slip a stitch and you yarn over. The thing is, you want to do the slip one yarn over simultaneously. So as you're working along these rows of the brioche, when it's time to do your brioche knit and then slip one yarn over, you will do a slip one yarn over over a solitary stitch. You will never work a slip one yarn over over a, a brioche stitch. It will always be a standalone stitch because that slip one yarn over creates the brioche stitch that you will then work into on the following row or round. All right, so there's one more very important thing that I have to point out in the pattern before we can get started and learn these stitches, all right? The important part is written over here in the notes and it is kind of hidden away if you don't really know where to look in the sense that it's right down here in the second to the last bullet point and it says the work is turned every second row. Seems easy enough, right? But here's what that boils down to. When you're working brioche, it takes two rows or two rounds to complete one row or one round. So as you're working this project with two colors, you are not going to turn your work until you have completed two rounds or two rows. All right, so obviously you won't turn your work when you're working two rows. But my point here is that you have to complete two passes on your needle before that counts as one completed row. And that's why when you come over here to the instructions and you see that the first row is a right side and the second row is also a right side, it's because you'll notice at the end of the first row it says do not turn. And then on the second row, that's when you're gonna turn. All right, so when you're working in brioche, it takes two rows to complete one. Now, typically when you're working with brioche patterns, they're written where it will say row 1A and 1B, and then 2A and 2B, and so on and so forth. But Yarnspiration's brioche patterns are written to where it's one row, and then two row, and then three row, and four row, even though you're still on the wrong side here, and the wrong side here, or the right side here, or the right side here, they count them as individual rows. I'm only pointing that out in case you have followed brioche patterns in the past and you're just like, I don't understand what's happening. Well, now you know. Or if you plan on following brioche patterns in the future that are not your inspirations, you can understand what is meant by 1A or 1B. It simply means you have two passes on your needle before you complete that one row or round. Pretty easy stuff, right? All right, so knowing all of that, which is still, it's kind of a lot, you're probably like, oh my gosh, sort of mind blown here. It will all make sense as we go into the actual project. But knowing all of that, as you look through the instructions now, they might not seem as daunting. Because as you're looking through here, you might say, okay, so it's a slip one yarn over, Marley's gonna show me how to do that, and then a knit one. Slip one arvo yarn over, and then a purl one. Okay, I know how to do all that. When we get to row two, I have my slip one pearl wise with yarn in front. All right, we know how to do that. A brioche pearl one. All right, well Marley said that it's just a pearl stitch, but I'm going to be purling into a partnered pair. Pretty easy, I know how to purl, I can do that. I can easily distinguish a partnered pair, so I'll be able to do that pretty easy. Then I have that slip one yarn over. All right, we'll be able to do that. As you continue on, you're gonna see you know all of these stitches already. Before we have even started, you know these stitches, all right? So you have got to trust me here. When I tell you this is a great beginner brioche project, it really is. And you have got to remember, it's just sticks and string. We're just doing essentially a knit one, purl one ribbing, but we have that little bit of extra there with the partnered pair created with that slip one yarn over. Okay, so here's the next step. I want you to go ahead and grab your color A and we're gonna cast on 81 stitches. I prefer the long tail cast on, but you can choose any cast on you wish. Then we're going to go ahead and work through the first four rows of the pattern, which is really just two rows, right? Because it takes two rows to complete one. So we're gonna work through the first four rows of the pattern. Then we're gonna take a look at our actual project, our sample, take a look at how it works with our pattern and then we're gonna learn how to work these decreases. You got this, I believe in you, believe in yourself. Let's go ahead, grab our yarn and get O going. This 
pattern did not indicate whether we're supposed to do the long tail cast on or a alternative cast on but I prefer the long tail so I'm gonna go ahead and use the long tail cast on and what would be a color A and cast on those 81 stitches and you do want to make sure that you're casting them on relatively loosely if you cast them on too tight the bottom of your cowl will turn out a little bit tighter than the rest of your cowl because the nature of the brioche stitch is to be nice and light and lofty. If you struggle with casting on loosely, it is highly recommended that you, maybe you go up a needle size or two to cast on your stitches. That way you can have a cast on edge that is gonna look nice and neat compared to the actual brioche fabric. Once you get all 81 stitches cast on, you are not gonna join to work in the rounds, okay? This is the bottom of our cowl. This is the bottom of the split. But you are going to go ahead and turn your work, okay? So this will be the right side of your work. And with your color A, you'll notice this is row one. We will go ahead and knit one stitch as normal, okay? knit one stitch and now we immediately go into a stitch that you're not familiar with it's the slip one yarn over and you're going to be very familiar with it by the end of this project you want to bring your yarn forward between your needles take your right hand needle go into the next stitch as if to purl and at the same time you want to slip this purl stitch off and bring this yarn up and over your right hand needle so this is a slip one yarn over. That's what that's called. So we have a slip one and a yarn over. That there is a partnered stitch. This here, what looks like two stitches, will be referred to as one stitch from here on out. Whenever we go to work this partner pair together, it will be called a brioche stitch whether this partner pair will be a brioche knit or a brioche purl determined, is determined by what we're working in pattern, but you will treat these two stitches as one, okay? So these are a partnered pair, all right? You guys with me? So that is called a slip one yarn over, and now we knit one. And we're gonna do that three times. So bring your yarn forward, go in as if to purl, slip one yarn over, that's a partnered pair, and then knit one, so that's two. Bring our yarn forward, go in as if to purl, slip one yarn over, that's a partnered pair, and there is a knit one. So that is three times, all right? Now it says we're gonna continue on in pattern, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a stitch marker right here. And I'm going to explain why later on, but right now I'm going to add a stitch marker right there, even though it's not in the pattern because I love stitch markers and it will be handy. All right. So the repeat here is a slip one yarn over and then a purl one. All right. So over here we did slip one yarn overs and knit one. Now we're going to do a slip one yarn over. So I bring my yarn forward, slip one yarn over. See how it's partnered together, right? And now I want to purl one. Well, in order to do that, you're gonna to have to bring your yarn back between your needles, back to the front. So just like when you do a yarn over and your next stitch is a purl, we're gonna do a slip one yarn over and then you have to bring your yarn between your needles back to the front so that way you can purl one. Okay, we're gonna keep doing that until we get down to the last eight stitches. So over here, our yarn is already in front. So you go in slip one yarn over, bring your yarn between the needles back to the front, and purl one. Slip one yarn over, and purl one. Slip one yarn over, and purl one. To me, this reminds me a lot of like a knit one, purl one, okay? Although obviously we aren't knitting one, we're slip one yarn over, gives us our partner, and then we purl one. Slip one yarn over, don't forget to bring your yarn between your needles back to the front, and then purl one. And we're gonna do this all the way to the last eight stitches, okay? Slip one yarn over, 
and then purl one. Slip one yarn over and then purl one. When you get to the last eight stitches, I'm gonna go ahead and grab another stitch marker here. I'm gonna place it on my needle. And for the last eight stitches, I will slip one yarn over and knit one. And I do that four times. Slip one yarn over, knit one. Slip one yarn over, knit one. Slip one yarn over and knit one. As you look at your needle, it's gonna look like a hot mess, okay? Seriously, all of those partnered pairs are in there and it just looks like you are a, a new knitter again and that you completely messed up, right? That's exactly what it looks like. And if that's what it looks like, congratulations, your first row of brioche is most likely 100% correct, okay? It looks crazy. But you have to remember, you still only have 81 stitches. And you might think, well, Marley, how do I have 81? I have all those yarn overs. Ah, ah, ah. Remember, those yarn overs, the slip one yarn over, they are now a partnered pair. So those yarn overs do not count as an individual stitch. They are partnered up with that slip one that you did. So now, as we go through the pattern and we do our brioche knit, or our brioche purl, we will knit or purl that partnered pair. You see what I mean? When I say brioche, I mean, it sounds really scary, right? We're gonna brioche knit. You're still just knitting. You're just knitting, it's just that the stitch you're knitting into happens to be that partnered pair. Does that make sense? All right, so, so don't be scared. You can absolutely do this. Let's go on to row two. I mentioned to you earlier that as you're working brioche, it takes two rows to complete one. So if we were to think of it that we just completed a row 1A, we need to complete 1B before we actually turn our work. Now with yarn inspirations, they count that second row as it says second row. So we are not going to turn our work here, okay? You are going to essentially go down to the other end of your needle where your yarn is not attached, right? This is not where your working yarn is. This is where this is where we started. Here's the other end of my needle where my working yarn is, right? So we're gonna come down here, and with our color B, we are now going to work a row all the way down with the color B, right? That's gonna give us our second row. The second row is where we will use our color B. And so as we continue on through this, what will be really handy is when you move those stitches down to get to the other end to do your B row, remember like your A row and your B row, your color B will be down there waiting for you. A lot of, a lot of different ways to think about this, right? All right, so in the interest of using some of my scrap yarns that I have lying around and to see how some other colorways work together, I'm gonna use this really bright pink for my color B. And this is part of the Lippy Colorama. And so I'm gonna come down here and I will start this row down here. And this time I will use my color B. So the first stitch is a slip one pearlwise with yarn in front. So I bring my yarn forward go into this first stitch, and it's just a stitch. It's not a slip one yarn over, it's just a stitch. So my yarn is forward, I slip one purlwise with yarn in front, okay? Now, it says I'm going to brioche purl one. You remember what I said to you? It's just gonna be a purl one. It just so happens that this stitch right here, see how it has that partnered pair? It has that yarn over, and that stitch with it. So I'm just going to purl this and make sure I go through all of the stitch. That's it, see, nothing special, you're just purling, very easy. All right, so once you brioche purl, the next stitch, which you'll see is a standalone stitch, we're going to slip one yarn over, all right? Here's a word to the wise. You don't ever do a slip one yarn over on top of a partnered pair, all right? Because then all of a sudden you'd have two of the yarn over type stitches on it. You don't ever do a slip one yarn over on a partnered pair. You only do a slip one yarn over on these single stitches. So right here I go in like I'm purling, my yarn is already in front, and I slip one yarn over. Then I'm going to do a brioche purl one. All right, well we know how to do that. I bring my yarn between my needles. A brioche purl one just means I need to make sure that I purl that partnered pair. 
So I go in and I purl it. Then I come over here, I slip one yarn over. Brioche purl and slip one yarn over. That brings me to my marker. I'm going to slip my marker. That also lets me know, hey, I just did that three times. I don't have to stress about that anymore, right? And I continue on with the pattern. Now, knowing that we are not going to slip one yarn over whenever we see a partnered pair, what do you think we're going to do with that partnered pair? We're either going to brioche knit it or brioche purl it. And we'll do that until we get to some sort of decreases, right? So whenever you come up to a partnered pair, you know you're either going to brioche knit or brioche purl, which just means you're going to knit or purl the partners, okay? So in the pattern right here for row two, we're going to brioche knit this. So that just means I'm going to make sure I go into that yarn over and the stitch because they're partners and knit it. It's really that easy, you guys. The next stitch is a single stitch. So what am I going to do? I'm going to slip one yarn over. So I bring my yarn forward, slip one yarn over. My yarn's back to the back. My next stitch here, it's going to be a brioche knit. This row is going to be super easy. I'm going to go down to the last eight stitches, which conveniently I've marked with my marker. So I'm just going to get in a nice rhythm of brioche knit, slip one yarn over, brioche knit, slip one yarn over, all the way down to my marked stitch. I'm to the last eight stitches, so I'm going to slip my marker. Remember, I have a marker in place. The instructions say I'm supposed to brioche knit. And then I'm going to slip one yarn over and then brioche purl. So yarn forward, slip one yarn over, bring my yarn forward, and brioche purl. Super easy. It just means we're purling, right? We're just purling that partnered pair. And we do that. Right down to the last stitch and we will purl that last stitch. Okay? Now we're to the end of our row. Both of our yarns are down here at the end, which is a good sign for you to know, oh, I can turn my work now. All right, so when both of your colors are down at the same end, you know that you have now completed one full row, right? You did row 1A and 1B, so to speak, and you're ready to turn your work because both of your colors are down here, all right? That's a very big clue that you can use. Whenever your colors are down at the end of your row, you know it's time to turn your work, all right? So I will turn my work. This will bring us to row three, and on row three, I'm gonna go back to using my color A, so back to sort of this deep wineish plum color, okay? So I'm gonna go back to my color A, which means my color B right here, this bright pink, is just gonna hang out, which is, again, another clue, because when my color A gets down to over here, it'll be all by itself. My color B will be over here waiting like, hey, come and get me. So it's a good clue for you to know what you're doing. Row three, this is the wrong side, okay? We did the right side before. Now we're on the wrong side. So we are going to purl one. So I'm gonna purl one stitch. Then I'm going to slip one yarn over. See, it's a solitary stitch there. So once again, I'm not slipping one yarn over a partnered pair. I slip one yarn over, and then I'm going to brioche purl. So I bring my yarn forward, and a brioche purl. What's really great about this is you can see the slip one yarn over. The yarn over is a different color from the slip one you did, right? So our partnered pair is really easy to see because we have the two colors happening. So if you ever get lost when we're working these two colors of, um, uh, a brioche, it becomes very easy to see when you're on this particular row for sure. All right, so we're going to brioche purl. Then we slip one yarn over, brioche purl, slip one yarn over, brioche purl. And that leaves us to one stitch before our marker, which you're like, wait a minute, what the heck has just happened? Well, remember this. 
When we came to the end of this row, we came down to the last eight stitches and we only worked across seven stitches right here. So this first stitch right here before our marker is going to be part of our repeat. So what I can do is if it bothers me, I can remove my marker and just change its place, right? I just remove it and then pop it right here, okay? Now I'm ready to go. This is my first stitch right here and it's a slip one yarn over and I'm ready to jump in to my pattern. Once I do my slip one yarn over, I'm supposed to brioche knit. Slip one yarn over and then brioche knit. Maybe <laughs> if I can get this going. Can you see that? Now still, it doesn't look like much is happening yet, but I promise it will look even cooler here after a couple rows and it'll be even easier. But right now, let's go ahead and do our slip one yarn over for all of your solitary standalone stitches. And for all of your partnered pairs, you're going to brioche knit this time. Okay, we're brioche knitting with our color A. Now I want you to make note that you're going down to the last eight stitches and just like before, our marker is gonna be in the wrong place on this particular row. So if you wanted to move your marker, you absolutely can move it. I'm just gonna take it off put that back because you want to get down to the last eight stitches and our marker was only marking seven kind of the same problem that's on the other side or not the same but the opposite <laughs> so once you get down to those last eight stitches of row three you will slip one yarn over then you will brioche purl slip one yarn over brioche purl Slip one yarn over, brioche purl, slip one yarn over, and you end with a purl. Now I'm at the end of the row, and don't be deceived, this is our tail, that is not the other end of our yarn. So this is my clue, I only have one color down here, so I know I'm not going to turn my work, I'm simply gonna go to the opposite end, and again, it still looks like it's a hot mess, right? It looks like things are crazy here but it's working up, I promise you, it's going to work up just beautifully. I come down to my opposite end, here's my color B down here waiting for me. I did not turn my work, so even though I'm on row four, as written in the Yarnspirations pattern, I'm still on the wrong side of my fabric, okay? So here we go, this would be row four. We're gonna slip one with yarn in front, and then on this row, we're going to brioche knit to begin with. So I bring my yarn back between my needles and I brioche knit. Slip one yarn over, brioche knit. Slip one yarn over, brioche knit. And then right here, slip one yarn over. Slip my marker. You with me? All right. So as I continue on down this row, once again, notice that my partnered pairs are two different colors, super convenient, I love when that happens, and all of my single stitches are right there, so when I do my slip one yarn over with those, it's also gonna be a two color partner pair, which is great. So after I slip my marker here, I'm gonna go into a brioche purl. All that means is I'm just gonna treat that partnered pair as if it's one and purl it, and then I slip one yarn over. Brioche purl, slip one yarn over. Let me get these stitches around here. Brioche purl, slip one yarn over. Brioche purl, slip one yarn over. As we're creating these stitches, the brioche purls I'm making, they actually look like they're in the purl gutter of a rib stitch, right? And the slip one yarn overs, they look like they're in the knit section of what would be a rib stitch. Can you see that? So if you ever get lost, once you get kind of to this row and beyond, after you do your slip one yarn over, you can take a look at the partnered pair here and take a look at what the stitches are beneath it. It's a purl. So that's a quick clue for you that when you're doing this partnered pair, you're going to brioche purl it. 
Here's a knit. We're going to slip one yarn over. I'm looking at a partnered pair and it looks like a pearl. I'm going to brioche pearl. Okay? Slip one yarn over. Brioche pearl. It's very similar to reading your knitting, right, as you're doing ribbing. You knit your knits and purl your pearls. Sort of the same idea. You brioche pearl your pearls and you brioche knit your knits when it's time. It's really quite convenient once you are able to recognize those stitches in the fabric, but it takes several rows to get to that point, all right? So the first couple rows are a little bit tricky because you can't really see at the start, okay? As you're coming down this row, you'll notice that your marker is one stitch in too many because it wants you to get down to the last seven stitches. So you want to go ahead and move your marker and you can just remove your marker completely if you want to now that you kind of get a rhythm of what's happening here. And on the last seven stitches, let me go ahead and do my purl here. So the last seven stitches, we have our slip one yarn over, brioche knit, slip one yarn over, brioche knit, slip one yarn over, brioche knit, whoops. And then we're supposed to slip one purl wise with yarn and back. So I keep my yarn and back, slip one purl wise, okay? So I'm at the end of my row. All of my yarn is down here, my color A and my color B is down here. All of my stitches look a little bit crazy, but if you look down this row, you'll notice that except right here at the start, right, because the start is a little bit different, you'll have a partnered pair, a single stitch, a partner pair, a single stitch, a partner pair, a single stitch, a partner pair, a single stitch, a partnered pair, a single stitch, so on and so forth. And as you're looking at these stitches, you will begin to see there's a knit column and there's a purl column. And on the next row, because on this one we turn our work, right, both of our yarns are down there, we have a knit column, which is now visible with our color B, and a purl column, which is now visible with our color A. A knit column with our color B, a purl column with our color A. And it starts to become very visible. Now that is different right here at the start and different right here at the end because if you look at the actual sample, you'll notice here at the split portion here that the first several rows here the opposite color is on the front can you see that how the black here is very visible for these first few um like columns of stitches and then it's the multicolor that's more of the dominant color here and then if i turn this the other way because remember it is reversible it's the opposite on the other side. It's the color is very dominant here at the start, and it's the, the darker shade is very dominant on the inside. Can you see that? Okay, so that's why on this piece, those stitches in here of where I was trying to mark off with these markers, which are now really they're in the way, so I would remove them after row four, okay? Just get rid of them and keep track of everything in the pattern as it's written. But I was trying to keep those uh, singled out for myself so that way I know that those stitches are going to look just a little bit different, okay? Now, as I mentioned, you already know how to do all the stitches with the exception of those decrease stitches. Pretty neat, right? I mean, I bet you never thought that would be the case. Like looking at this pattern, you were probably like, I'm never going to get this. I don't know what these things mean. It's not that easy. But I hope that once you were able to watch me talk to you about how to treat these stitches and what you're really doing, you're just knitting and purling. It's working a ribbed pattern just with a little extra bit there, right, with that partnered pair. And it becomes very easy to do. I'm hoping that once you saw me do that, you are a little bit more confident in your brioche skills and you can continue on. Now it isn't until you get up to this point in the cowl, and it's at this point that you are no longer working back and forth in rows, you will start to work in rounds at this point. And that really happens right here in the pattern. So once you reach about eight inches of that brioche stitch pattern, we were working up. So you, you repeat rounds three through six until it measures about eight inches. 
and then you are back to your right side and you begin to work in rounds. Nothing here should be too revolutionary. You should know how to do these stitches. There's a knit two together. We know how to do the slip one yarn over and the brioche knit and the brioche purl. There, there's nothing new here that we don't know how to do, right? We're just going to be working in the round. So we're no longer going to be turning our work back and forth. We're simply going to always have the front of our work always facing us. But once this piece measures about four inches from the join, that's when we have to work these decreases. And these decreases are what give us the shaping for the top of the cowl. Can you see these decreases, how they come together? And in order to maintain the ribbed pattern here, hopefully you can see, in order to maintain these ribbed pattern, you work these decreases to where it decreases like two columns of stitches. So it's like these two columns of knit stitches come together and they become one. And then these two columns of knit stitches come together and they become one, so on and so forth. So that way at the top of the cowl, you have a much smaller circumference than you do down here at the bottom of the cowl. All right, does that make a little bit of sense there? So what you need to know how to do at this point really is how do you do those decreases? So what I wanna do is go ahead and grab my swatch. I'm gonna grab a swatch and show you how to work these decreases. So that way, when you get about four inches up from your join here and you have to do your first decrease, you'll know how to do it. And I want you to notice here the decreases are full fashion decreases. So that means you have one decrease that's going to lean towards the right and one decrease that's gonna to lean to the left, all right? So they're the same type of decrease, but they're going to lean different directions because it's a full fashion decrease. Isn't that cool? All right, so if you didn't believe me before, maybe you believe me now that you can do these brioche stitches. Whether you wanna watch the next part of this video now so that you know what's coming up or you want to get your project up to where you're ready for those decreases, that's totally up to you. The video will be here for you waiting whenever you're ready. But for me, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a swatch so that I can show you how to work these decreases so you're ready to go when the time comes. All right, let's do this. Okay, looking at my swatch, I have three different colors going on here, so that way you could better see what was happening, all right? So I have my blue color here, which was my original color A. My green color was my original color B. And now I'm using a purple as my replacement color A, so that way you can see how these stitches are worked, okay? When you get to the point you're supposed to do your brioche decrease left, you will be facing a brioche partnered pair, a single stitch, and a brioche partnered pair. All right, when you get to those stitches, that's what you are going to do this brioche decrease stitch, uh, brioche left decrease. And we're going to work it over all three of these, all right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna slip the next, next stitch in line knitwise with the yarn in back of your work. So you're gonna go in, to that partnered pair knitwise and slip it with the yarn to the back of the work. Okay? Now we're going to do a brioche knit two together. So really we're gonna knit these two stitches together just like we normally would. And it's just that partnered pair and the single stitch. We're going to knit these two together. All right? Now we're gonna take our left hand needle, grab that stitch we slipped, grab it from the front, and have it jump up and over that stitch right there that we finished. That is a brioche left decrease. It's very similar to a basic decrease. We slipped one stitch as if to knit, we did a knit two together, and then we passed the slip stitch over. Don't overthink this. It's very simple. They're simple stitches. They just have that little extra bit on there for the partnered pair. How many of you are saying partnered pair now? It's, it's a tongue twister. Keep saying it. All right. <laughs> All right. So this is our resulting stitch right there that leans to the left. 
Pretty cool, right? Okay. Okay, let's do our brioche right decrease. It's very similar to the brioche left decrease, only instead of only having one stitch jump up and over, like the past slip stitch over, we're gonna do that two times. Let me show you what I mean. The first thing I wanna point out is once again, we will be doing this over three stitches. So you'll have your partnered pair, your single stitch, and your partnered pair. Go ahead and slip the first partner pair knitwise off of the left hand needle. Then knit your single stitch. Now we're going to take our left hand needle and have our partnered pair jump up and over that one stitch there. So my partnered pair, I'm going to have it jump up and over that purple stitch. You see that? All right. Now I'm going to take my purple stitch and move it back over here to my left hand needle. Now I'm gonna use my right hand needle, come over here to this second partnered pair and grab it and have it jump over top of my purple. See what I mean, about two jumps? Now that's done, move the purple back over to the right hand needle and you've just decreased two stitches, your stitches are leaning now to the right and Bob's your uncle. What do you think? Those decreases aren't too difficult, right? I mean, once you realize that you're decreasing two stitches over one, it's like, all right, I got this. Do you see what I mean? How I've, I've reiterated constantly that it's really just a knit one, purl one pattern throughout. This is a nice squishy fabric. You're gonna see as you're working along, it becomes so squishy and light and lofty and you're just going to love it. Now, the last thing I want to point out, once you get all of these decreases done, it's gonna be time to work your bind off, right? And you're gonna bind off in a ribbing pattern and you wanna make sure you bind off a little bit loose. So if you used a larger needle to cast on because you tend to uh, cast on really tight or bind off really tight, use a larger needle for your bind off up here as well and it will turn out really nice and lovely. As you finish your project, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. And you are going to want to wear it. And when you do, please snap a picture and share with us on social media. Use hashtag Marley Bird, hashtag Yarnspo, or hashtag Handmade with Joanne and share with us your lovely finished project. And for me, I'll be sure to smash your like button as I see it online. I have really enjoyed teaching you how to do these fun brioche stitches and now hopefully brioche is not so daunting not so scary and it's something you want to try out a little bit more just remember the best thing to do is add those lifelines throughout your project so you have a safety net and just be confident it's just sticks and string all right everybody that's it for me i hope you have enjoyed this video if you did make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe here to the marley bird youtube channel i'll talk to you guys again very soon bye y'all